Good morning, folks. We've got a few space weather items to hit today, including a long-duration solar flare and CME. Better look at the incoming sunspots as well. We'll hit top science news, including the galactic magnetic fields, but we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Most of the last day was relatively quiet, but a few hours ago, a long-duration M-class flare erupted from the departing spots on the south, released a good bit of plasma with it, and crackled for a few hours in the aftermath of that release. The core of the eruption was a double release, actually. There was an initial surge, and then a destabilization breakout of the second wave. The coronal mass ejection was much wider, and the coronal plasma was also pushed away, and it's actually difficult to tell if the edge will be heading towards Earth on coronagraphs. Either way, it would be a minor glancing blow, but I'd say there's about a 50-50 chance of the edge of this eruption clipping our planet as we approach the weekend, Thursday or Friday. The big incoming sunspots have gone pretty quiet, and that is remarkable given their size and their magnetic complexity. The positive blue intrusion into the red negative region leading the sunspots has grown, and its ability to produce larger flares is higher now than when it was actually flaring two days ago. We'll be monitoring it closely today. Quick note with much of the weather news focused on California, and rightly so, Nova Scotia is doing its Alaska impression and is in a state of emergency with more than 60 inches of snowfall impacting both travel and infrastructure. First up in the articles today is yet another confirmation that the solar polar magnetic fields are the best way to predict sunspots. During the grand solar minimum fervor online the last decade, it was those solar polar fields that allowed me to forecast that this cycle wouldn't be a dud, and it hasn't been, actually a bit stronger than the last cycle. We'll be able to forecast the next cycle by 2027 or 2028 when those same fields begin their process of a rise ahead of the next reversal in the 2030s. Lastly, folks, got a good one here showing how the galactic bubbles react to large-scale galactic magnetic fields. I'll show one of the graphics from the paper so we can see how the expanding bubbles from the core are shaped by those large-scale fields. And this is due to the north and south polar jet components of the large poloidal torus we find in galaxies, including our own. It's got the same structure as the sun's and earth's magnetic fields, and that's important because those large-scale structures also contain the equatorial magnetic reversal point between the north and south in a rippling current sheet. Now, the Earth's is largely stymied by the solar wind, but the sun's current sheet is continuous throughout the solar system. The Milky Way's is continuous throughout our galaxy. It is this galactic magnetic reversal point that is impacting our solar system right now and causing the greatest changes in the entire stellar and planetary environment. Today's paper on the galactic bubbles, just another confirmation that that large-scale system exists. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, right now. It's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.